Do you want to be made well? Do you? Then pick up the map. It's a conversation being held in countless churches across this land. We need to do something. We're dying. The young people don't stay. The visitors come once and never come back. What can we do? We need to do something. And then some of them get together and they start reading some books and they get depressed. And then they, they find some other books and they start to read those. And they remind themselves of this truth that growth in the spirit is just as important as solid church attendance. And then someone finds an article or two and the article says basically, it's not your problem. It's those people out there. They don't understand what's important. They don't understand what they need. And then after a while, they do a survey of their ministry, and more often than not, they decide to keep things just the way they are. Stay the course, because things are just right at their church, even though the nose of the ship seems to be pointing down. Do you want to be made well? Do you? then pick up the map. Have you heard anyone say it lately that this is a country searching for its soul? You hear it said by conservatives and liberals. You hear it said by those in the middle. You hear it said and said again, but have you noticed the problem always seems to be them? They believe the wrong thing. They act the wrong way. They won't listen up to the things that I say. Yeah, that was a poem. It's over. And when's the last time you heard a leader stand up and mean something like, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Because somehow along the way, we've gotten this message that this society was created to serve us. Remember when Bush and Gore ran against each other, if you're old enough? Well, it came to light during that election that we had all this money. We had this huge surplus of money. And what did one of the big questions of that campaign become? Hey, mister, you might be president. If I elect you, how am I going to see some of that money? What's in it for me? Doing for your country cannot mean squeezing every dime you possibly can out of her. It cannot mean expecting her to take care of you if you refuse to do anything for yourself. It cannot mean taking every job we can create and sending it overseas. It cannot mean taking that wonderful saying, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man to fish, and he eats for the rest of his life, and twisting it into something like, let a man starve and maybe he'll learn how to fish. <laughs> a country searching for its soul is not going to find an answer amid a chorus of people all saying, what about me, what about me? The focus has got to change. Do you want to be made well? Do you? Then pick up the map. We're all broken. We all have needs. We watched this last week as a beloved and great actor, <coughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman, succumbed to his. But whether the demon is food or drink or drugs or violence or pornography or being locked in codependent relationships or insecurity or seeking approval or any of the many, many other things that might be less dangerous. These things plague us. We have demons. And moving past them can be really hard. Because you know the old saying, right? The devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. It's scary to move past our demons. It's hard for us. It's hard for us to consider change. One of the most amazing and yet well-documented things about human beings is how 
hard it is for us to change our behaviors, even when we know we're locked in a behavior that's not good for us. Our demons can almost come to define us, and laying them aside really does mean moving into a very different <coughs> and new life. And while it sounds great to talk about that, actually doing that is another matter. Do you want to be made well? Do you? Some of you remember that old movie, Life of Brian, Monty Python? Well, in that movie, the scene is the time of Jesus, and Brian, the poor man who's going to be eventually mistaken for a messiah, is walking through town, and as he's walking through town, this guy with, like, glowing skin, starts hopping along behind him, and the guy starts crying out, alms for an ex-leper, alms for an ex-leper. And Brian says, ex-leper? And they have this conversation. And in the conversation, it comes out, Jesus, the man said, Jesus came and he cured me. And then he says, one minute I'm a leper with a trade, and the next minute my livelihood is gone. Without so much as a buy your leave. <laughs> Obviously, it's a silly scene. But it illustrates what we're talking about. Jesus says, pick up your mat. And we have to decide. Do we really want to? Because it means living differently. Now, obviously, today I am not talking about physical illness. We all accept healing from Jesus very readily when it comes to that. But there's a sense in this passage, when Jesus says to the man, pick up your mat and walk, he's saying, walk into life with me. And that's what Jesus is saying to us, too. And you know what? When we walk with him, well, we're going to meet some Pharisees. And they're going to come around, and they're going to remind us, hey, there are some rules around this place, buddy. You don't sit in that pew over there. Uh-uh. That's where the Martin family sits. <laughs> That's right. We don't use any of that pita bread in communion either. We use wafers around here. Or, what do you mean you want to start a bell choir? That's kind of old-fashioned, isn't it? We're trying to be cutting edge. Where to go the other way? Drums? Drums in church? They're drums. They're loud. Oh, or speaking of loud, oh, no kid noise during the worship service. Disrespectful. I love kid noise. <laughs> and those Pharisees are going to say some other things. They're going to go around and tell you, well, we don't do things like that this way in our country. And we can't have a Super Bowl commercial that has America the Beautiful being sung in lots of different languages. Because we know the first Americans spoke English, right? <laughs> well, the Pharisees will tell you that you've got to take this job over here that pays more money, even though it makes you really sad, instead of this job over here that pays a little less, but that makes you happy. Or they might say, you can't change because I need you to stay the way you are. Or if that pharisaical voice plays in your own head, which often happens to us, it might say, if I pick up my mat and I walk with God, I'm afraid of what I might become. Do you want to be made well? The way of God is not our way. But we must embrace the way of God if we want to make our churches better. We must embrace God's way, if we want our country to become what it can be. It's the way we must embrace if we want to heal the environment, build a just planet, provide for future generations, if we want to give the most people the opportunity for a fulfilling life. The way of God is not our way. But in taking the hand of Christ and walking with Christ, we can beat back our demons and find new life. The religious establishment hated Jesus because he wouldn't live by their rules. 
Jesus lived seeking to make the will of God a reality. And that meant healing the people who needed healing, whether they were Roman or Samaritan or Jewish or Greek. It meant serving people beyond that set of people that lived by a rather arbitrary and very human set of rules. It meant healing on the Sabbath. The religious establishment hated Jesus because he saw something that they couldn't even see. That when you pick up your mat and you walk with God, you got to leave something behind. You have to leave something behind. That notion that you were in control. That notion that broken as you are, you were still calling the shots in your life. You have to put that down and exchange it for living a life where your actions are guided by love. And yeah, that's kind of scary. Also exciting and invigorating. Do you want to be made? Do you? Pick up the map. And remember as we walk, we never walk.